a few years ago, The Onion ran the story about how Kim Jong-un had been voted the sexiest man alive. And this story was picked up by some journalist in China and sold as like a true story. And I thought this was a really interesting moment, being like it played into a perception of uh, Chinese people being tone deaf to humor. When I had started studying Chinese literature a few years ago, I'd also had a similar impression that a lot of the modern literature you got was really kind of dull or kind of a bit of a downer. And I had grown up watching a lot of Monty Python, a lot of the Marx Brothers, and so part of me was curious, does China have any kind of comic traditions? You do hear it often repeated, you know, Chinese people have no sense of humor, they seem to be really, not morose, but kind of straight-faced. I think that's very easy to kind of set aside. But I do feel like that notion that uh, Chinese people have been victimized, right, they've uh, suffered oppression, hardship, uh, Western imperialism, Japanese imperialism, invasion, so on and so forth, and that this is just kind of got everybody down. I think that's only one side of the story. And so what I try to do in this book is not to like throw the trauma aside or completely ignore it, but to show, show how some of the people who responded you know, were extremely resilient. And not only that, but we're considering right, what is the value of humor. So for, I'll give you one example. In 1924, this writer named Lin Yutang, he had been educated in the U.S., in Europe, and the like, and he actually thought that the Chinese people lacked a sense of humor. He thought that a lot of their earlier comic traditions were kind of moribund, or they were mean-spirited. And so he wanted to displace them with something that's more tolerant, more humane. And so when people have written histories of Chinese humor, they've often started from this moment. But actually one of the really interesting things about this moment is Lin Yutang was really successful in making all of the earlier forms of Chinese humor seem obsolete. And so what the focus of this book is really that period leading up to what I call the invention of humor, where everything was all of the parody, all of the farce, all of the uh, humorous mockery. Like there's a, a tremendous tradition of, uh, of kind of humorous invective that the New Tone wanted to push aside. So I feel like this is an, an untold chapter in Chinese history. In the early 20th century, you had this big boom in the popular press. And if you disagreed with scholar X or writer Y in the past, maybe you just write him a letter. Or if you met and you say, your writing sucks, or your ideas are stupid, you know, or you're a big whatever, right? Your mom is so fat, she... You would just say that in person. But now you had this popular press, and people were publishing open letters, mocking each other, and trying to... There was a kind of a game of one-upsmanship where people were trying to come up with the most outrageous curses. And so in one chapter, I focus on this culture of cursing and how it became modern by going public. And you see some things, some echoes of that in online discourse, right? People wring their hands about how negative uh, the internet culture is, how many trolls there are. And this is, this is true in China, but I feel like we see echoes of this earlier period from, you know, 90, 100 years earlier. Where is Chinese humor headed? Uh, it's anybody's guess. I think a lot of it will be online and through uh, these different unofficial channels for the time being. You do get state-sponsored humor as well. The uh, communist regime, since early days, since the 1950s, they had kind of officially sanctioned humor. There were jokes carried in the People's Daily in the 1950s, 1960s. You still get uh, some attempts at appealing to now an international audience by producing humorous videos by the state. Some of it is funny. Some people will say, like, communists have no sense of humor. That's not true. But anybody who's watched the, uh, you know, Chinese New Year celebrations on TV finds a lot of canned trash humor. And so a lot of the more edgy stuff is either happening in um, theaters, uh, some of it is happening through text messages, right, or WeChat or these other services, which are much harder to control. You know, this is a very well-known phenomenon in China now, the so-called 50-cent party, these people who are paid by different government organizations to suppress jokes and make everything politically correct. Those people are out there, they do have a huge effect, but they are playing this gigantic game of whack-a-mole. And in fact, these jokes keep popping up, and they, you, know, you knock it down over there and it comes up over here. So I think that uh, looking forward, we're still going to see a lot of that until we get a much uh, more relaxed regime. So the shirt that I'm wearing, I decided to forego the blazer today. 
uh, says, which is a pretty approximate translation of the old English saying, my hovercraft is full of eels.